Welcome to the Buddha's Wisdom Podcast. In this second series of the Buddha's Wisdom Podcast, we are going through the Majjhima Nikaya, the Middle Discourses of the Buddha. This episode is the 21st Sutta of the Majjhima Nikaya, the Kakachupama Sutta, which is known as the Simile of the Saw. This teaching has several memorable similes on the importance of patience and love, even when faced with abuse and criticism. The Buddha finishes the simile of the saw with one of the most memorable similes found in the suttas. This translation of the Kakachupama Sutta is by Bhikkhu Sajato and was sourced from Sutta Central. This and other useful links can be found in the show notes to this episode. The Kakachupama Sutta, the simile of the saw. So I have heard. At one time the Buddha was staying near Savati in Jeta's Grove, Anathapindika's monastery. Now at that time, Venerable Paguna of the top knot was mixing too closely together with the nuns, so much so that if any mendicant criticized those nuns in his presence, Paguna of the top knot got angry and upset and even instigated disciplinary proceedings. And if any mendicant criticised Paguna of the top knot in their presence, those nuns got angry and upset, and even instigated disciplinary proceedings. That's how much Paguna of the top knot was mixing too closely together with the nuns. Then a mendicant went up to the Buddha, bowed, sat down to one side, and told him what was going on. So the Buddha addressed a certain monk, Please, monk, in my name, tell the mendicant Paguna of the top knot that the teacher summons him. Yes, sir, that monk replied. He went to Paguna of the top knot and said to him, Reverend Paguna, the teacher summons you. Yes, Reverend, Paguna replied. He went to the Buddha, bowed, sat down to one side. The Buddha said to him, Is it really true, Paguna, that you've been mixing overly closely together with the nuns, so much so that if any mendicant criticises those nuns in your presence, you get angry and upset and even instigate disciplinary proceedings? And if any mendicant criticises you in those nuns' presence, they get angry and upset and even instigate disciplinary proceedings? Is that how much You're mixing overly closely together with the nuns? Yes, sir. Paguna, are you not a gentleman who has gone forth from the lay life to homelessness? Yes, sir. As such, it's not appropriate for you to mix so closely with the nuns. So if anyone criticises those nuns in your presence, you should give up any desires or thoughts of the lay life. If that happens... You should train like this. My mind will be unaffected. I will blurt out no bad words. I will remain full of compassion, with a heart of love and no secret hate. That's how you should train. So even if someone strikes those nuns with fists, stones, rods and swords in your presence, you should give up any desires or thoughts of the lay life. If that happens... You should train like this. My mind will be unaffected. I will blurt out no bad words. I will remain full of compassion, with a heart of love and no secret hate. That's how you should train. So if anyone criticizes you in your presence, you should give up any desires or thoughts of the lay life. If that happens, you should train like this. My mind will be unaffected. I will blurt out no bad words. I will remain full of compassion, with a heart of love and no secret hate. That's how you should train. So, Paguna, even if someone strikes you with fists, stones, rods and swords, you should give up any desires or thoughts of the lay life. If that happens, you should train like this. My mind will be unaffected. I will blurt out no bad words. I will remain full of compassion, with a heart of love 
and no secret hate. That's how you should train. Then the Buddha said to the mendicants, Mendicants, I used to be satisfied with the mendicants. Once I address them. I eat my food in one sitting per day. Doing so, I find that I'm healthy and well, nimble, strong and living comfortably. You too should eat your food in one sitting per day. Doing so, you'll find that you're healthy and well, nimble, strong and living comfortably. I didn't have to keep on instructing those mendicants. I just had to prompt their mindfulness. Suppose a chariot stood harnessed to thoroughbreds at a level crossroads, with a goad ready. Then a deft horse trainer, a master charioteer, might mount the chariot. Taking the reins in his right hand and the goad in his left, he'd drive out and back wherever he wishes, whenever he wishes. In the same way, I didn't have to keep on instructing those mendicants. I just had to prompt their mindfulness. So, mendicants, you too should give up what's unskillful and devote yourselves to skillful qualities. In this way, you'll achieve growth, improvement and maturity in this teaching and training. Suppose that not far from a town or village, there was a large grove of sal trees that was choked with castor oil weeds. Then along comes a person who wants to help protect and nurture that grove. They'd cut down the crooked sal saplings that were robbing the sap and throw them out. They'd clean up the interior of the grove and properly care for the straight, well-formed sal saplings. In this way, in due course, the sal grove would grow, increase and mature. In the same way, mendicants, you too should give up what's unskillful and devote yourselves to skillful qualities. In this way you'll achieve growth, improvement and maturity in this teaching and training. Once upon a time, mendicants, right here in Savati, there was a housewife named Vedika. She had this good reputation. The housewife Vedika is sweet, even-tempered and calm. Now Vedika had a bonded maid named Kali who was deft, tireless and well organised in her work. Then Kali thought, My mistress has a good reputation as being sweet, even-tempered and calm. But does she actually have anger in her and just not show it? Or does she have no anger? Or is it just because my work is well organised that she doesn't show anger, even though she still has it inside? Why don't I test my mistress? So Kali got up during the day. Vedika said to her, Oi, wench, Kali! What is it, madam? You're getting up in the day. What's up with you, wench? Nothing, madam. Oh, so nothing's up, you naughty maid. But you get up in the day. Angry and upset, she scowled. Then Kali thought, My mistress actually has anger in her and just doesn't show it. It's not that she has no anger. It's just because my work is well organised that she doesn't show anger, even though she still has it inside. Why don't I test my mistress further? So Kali got up later in the day. Vedika said to her, Oi, wench, Kali! What is it, madam? You're getting up even later in the day. What's up with you, wench? Nothing, madam. Oh, so nothing's up with you, you naughty maid. But you get up later in the day. Angry and upset, she blurted out angry words. Then Kali thought, My mistress actually has anger in her and just doesn't show it. It's not that she has no anger. It's just because my work is well organised that she doesn't show anger, even though she still has it inside. Why don't I test my mistress further? So Kali got up even later in the day. Vedika said to her, Oi, wench, Kali! What is it, madam? You're getting up even later in the day. What's up with you, wench? Nothing, madam. Oh, so nothing's up with you, you naughty maid. But you get up even later in the day. Angry and upset, 
She grabbed a rolling pin and hit Carly on the head, cracking it open. Then Carly, with blood pouring from her cracked skull, denounced her mistress to the neighbours. See, ladies, what the sweet one did. See what the even-tempered one did. See what the calm one did. How on earth can she grab a rolling pin and hit her only maid on the head, cracking it open, just for getting up late? Then, after some time, the housewife Vedika got this bad reputation. The housewife Vedika is fierce, ill-tempered and not calm at all. In the same way, a mendicant may be the sweetest of the sweet, the most even-tempered of the even-tempered and the calmest of the calm, so long as they don't encounter any disagreeable criticism. But it's when they encounter disagreeable criticism that you'll know whether they're really sweet, even-tempered and calm. I don't say that a mendicant is easy to admonish if they make themselves easy to admonish only for the sake of robes, alms food, lodgings and medicines and supplies for the sick. Why is that? Because when they don't get robes, alms food, lodgings and medicines and supplies for the sick, they're no longer easy to admonish. But when a mendicant is easy to admonish purely because they honour, respect, revere, worship and venerate the teaching, then I say that they're easy to admonish. So, mendicants, you should train yourselves. We will always be easy to admonish purely because we honour, respect, revere, worship and venerate the teaching. That's how you should train. Mendicants, there are these five ways in which others might criticise you. Their speech may be timely or untimely, true or false, gentle or harsh, beneficial or harmful, from the heart of love or from secret hate. When others criticise you, they may do so in any of these ways. If that happens, you should train like this. Our minds will remain unaffected. We will blurt out no bad words. We will remain full of compassion, with a heart of love and no secret hate. We will meditate spreading a heart of love to that person. And with them as a basis... We will meditate spreading a heart full of love to everyone in the world, abundant, expansive, limitless, free of enmity and ill will. That's how you should train. Suppose a person was to come along carrying a spade and basket and say, I shall make this great earth be without earth. And they'd dig all over, scatter all over, spit all over, and urinate all over, saying, be without earth! Be without earth! What do you think, mendicants? Could that person make this great earth be without earth? No, sir. Why is that? Because this great earth is deep and limitless. It's not easy to make it be without earth. That person will eventually get weary and frustrated. In the same way, there are these five ways in which others might criticise you. Their speech may be timely or untimely, true or false, gentle or harsh, beneficial or harmful, from a heart of love or from secret hate. When others criticise you, they may do so in any of these ways. If that happens, you should train like this. Our minds will remain unaffected. We will blurt out no bad words. We will remain full of compassion, with a heart of love and no secret hate. We will meditate spreading a heart of love to that person. And with them as a basis, we will meditate spreading a heart like the earth to everyone in the world. Abundant, expansive, limitless, free of enmity and ill will. That's how you should train. Suppose a person was to come along with a dye such as red lac, turmeric, indigo or rose madder and say, I shall draw pictures on the sky, making pictures appear there. What do you think, mendicants? Could that person draw pictures on the sky? No, sir. Why is that? Because the sky is formless and invisible. It's not easy to draw pictures there. 
that person will eventually get weary and frustrated. In the same way, there are these five ways in which others might criticise you. Suppose a person was to come along carrying a blazing grass torch and say, I shall burn and scorch the river Ganges with this blazing grass torch. What do you think, mendicants? Could that person burn and scorch the river Ganges with a blazing grass torch? No, sir. Why is that? Because the river Ganges is deep and limitless. It's not easy to burn and scorch it with a blazing grass torch. That person will eventually get weary and frustrated. In the same way, there are these five ways in which others might criticise you. Suppose there was a cat skin bag that was rubbed, well rubbed, very well rubbed, soft, silky, rid of rustling and crackling. Then a person comes along carrying a stick or a stone and says, I shall make this soft cat skin bag rustle and crackle with this stick or stone. What do you think, mendicants? Could that person make that soft cat skin bag rustle and crackle with that stick or stone? No, sir. Why is that? Because that cat skin bag is rubbed, well rubbed, very well rubbed, soft, silky, rid of rustling and crackling. It's not easy to make it rustle or crackle with a stick or stone. That person will eventually get weary and frustrated. In the same way, there are these five ways in which others might criticise you. Their speech may be timely or untimely. True or false, gentle or harsh, beneficial or harmful, from a heart of love or from secret hate. When others criticise you, they may do so in any of these ways. If that happens, you should train like this. Our minds will remain unaffected. We will blurt out no bad words. We will remain full of compassion, with a heart of love and no secret hate. We will meditate spreading a heart of love to that person. And with them as a basis, we will meditate spreading a heart like a catskin bag to everyone in the world. Abundant, expansive, limitless, free of enmity and ill will. That's how you should train. Even if low-down bandits were to sever you limb from limb with a two-handled saw, Anyone who had a malevolent thought on that account would not be following my instructions. If that happens, you should train like this. Our minds will remain unaffected. We will blurt out no bad words. We will remain full of compassion, with a heart of love and no secret hate. We will meditate spreading a heart of love to that person. And with them as a basis... We will meditate, spreading a heart full of love to everyone in the world. Abundant, expansive, limitless, free of enmity and ill will. That's how you should train. If you frequently reflect on this advice, the simile of the saw, do you see any criticism, large or small, that you could not endure? No, sir. So, mendicants... You should frequently reflect on this advice, the simile of the saw. This will be for your lasting welfare and happiness. That is what the Buddha said. Satisfied, the mendicants approved of what the Buddha said. This ends the Kakachupama Sutta. If you've enjoyed listening to the Buddha's Wisdom Podcast, please subscribe via your favourite podcast player for easy access to future episodes. And share this podcast with friends and family who may benefit from this easily accessible teaching. If you'd like to find out more about the Buddha's Wisdom Podcast, you can go to the everydaydharma.net website. And if you'd like to support this free distribution Dharma project by making a one-off or recurring donation, follow the ko-fi.com link in the show notes below thank you for listening may you all find happiness and peace